Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Tuesday the 9th of March 2021 and the time has just gone 9.34 GMT. And it's been a fairly positive start to the European trading session. Uh, the major indices are a little higher. Um, the building on yesterday's gains were very impressive uh, rallies were, were achieved. Um, what was driving that? Um, well, yesterday, well, in the last couple of days, it was confirmed that the U.S. Senate uh, supported the $1.9 trillion stimulus package to help move the U.S. economy along. So, including in that will be stimulus checks um, worth uh, $1,400. Uh, so, that was really kind of jolted uh, U.S. Well, global, global sentiment higher, but we saw particularly high sentiment in, the, uh, in, in Europe yesterday. But we did see a bit of a negative uh, impact because of the optimism surrounding the stimulus checks. Uh, we did see that the U.S. 10-year government bond yield, the 10-year yield, uh, moved north of uh, one, one spot 60, well, sorry, 1.6 percent. That caused a few ripples um, in the market because traders get a bit ner have been getting a bit nervous recently about that because higher bond yields. Um, often points to both higher growth but also higher inflation and inflation worries can worry some equity markets equity traders because the view can be higher inflation might might justify or warrant higher interest rates something the federal reserve don't want to be even thinking about right now um but there was a bit of a move move to the downside <clears throat> a, slight, a slight retreat in u.s government bond yields um in the last few days and weeks, we've heard from various central bankers, um, you know, Jerome Powell, the head of the Federal Reserve, Janet Yellen, um, the former head of the Federal Reserve and the current U.S. Treasury Secretary. They've expressed, they're not, they've, they've, they've suggested that they're not overly concerned about, um, about inflation. And with that, that's kind of tempered fears and expectations in around what's going on with the 10-year yield and when at some point will the Federal Reserve look to tighten monetary policy. Um, also playing in the mix has been a fairly sharp sell-off in tech stocks. The, the Nasdaq futures are pointing higher today, but tech stocks as a whole have been underperforming recently. Ten, probably because um, tech stocks, people have been questioning their exceptionally high valuations, but also given the recovery story in um, it's on, given the recovery story in relation to vaccines being rolled out and the prospect of, of economies reopening again, more traditional stocks, uh, airlines, travel, transport, retail, hospitality, they're all um, doing relatively well, let alone the kind of main, let alone the kind of main uh, industries, uh, nutrition industries, commodity stocks, and banking stocks. So we have been seeing a rotation out of uh, tech stocks and back into uh, traditional players. Um, with always with my video, uh, I'll run through the major events and co corporate and economic events of the week, and then I'll look at the major, uh, the major, major markets. Uh, so the weekend article can be found on our website under cmc, uh, cmcmarkets.com, under insights, under the latest news and analysis. So today we had fuller figures out from ITV, um, both revenues and profits dipped and, we, and the share price sold off on the back of that. AMC Entertainment, um, they've been in the news recently, uh, given in a similar vein to the kind of GameStop mania. Um, but um, they're a cinema chain over, over in the US. The prospect of the economy's reopening again would greatly benefit a company like theirs. On Wednesday, we have a meeting from Bank of, Bank of Canada. Um, we're not going to be expecting any kind of major changes to monetary policy from the Bank of Canada anytime soon. Bumble, the dating app, they have four fourth quarter numbers coming out on Wednesday. Uh, what's going to be probably the bigger, one of the bigger events on Wednesday is going to be US CPI. At the start of the video, I talked about how the fears of rising inflation is pushing bond yields higher, which in some instances is putting pressure on stocks. So a jolt higher inflation on Wednesday could be a, could be um, a catalyst which puts pressure on stocks. Conversely, if, the, if inflation is fairly fairly muted, it doesn't really change a whole lot. That might be the kind of sign that you know what prices. That might be the sign that you know what there's not there's no need to get overly worried about inflation. Um, Church of the Capital have quarterly numbers coming out on Thursday. Uh, we also have the ECB meeting, similar event with the Bank of Canada. No great change is expected on, on that front. Um, if anything, the European Central Bank, I suspect, would like a weaker euro. Um, but how they actually have to get that, it's going to be a different story. And Morrison's, the UK supermarket chain, has full year numbers coming out on Thursday. 
but we also have further figures out from Rolls Royce. We've obviously had a very tough time in the past 12 months because of the pandemic. Their aviation sector, their, their uh, aviation business has been under tremendous pressure because of the what's going on with, with air travel. And then on Friday morning, we ha we will have um, G GDP numbers coming out of the UK. This is going to be closely watched um, in light of the fact that the UK economy grew by 1% in the fourth quarter of 2020, in the, in the last quarter, how things are going to be shaping up with respect to growth and output, given the kind of post-Christmas you know, slump that is, off, that is off in there, given the lockdown, uh, given the lockdown situ uh, situation, and overall kind of general kind of you know, lower, lower kind of activity mood that, that often prevails in January. At the same time, we'll also have manufacturing production uh, numbers coming out from the UK too. Starting off with the FTSE 100, so a multi-month high was achieved back in early January. The market had a, had a sell-off. It push, has been pushing lower, pushing higher, pushing lower, pushing higher ever since. So it's been broadly been moving higher the last few sessions. We're back above, comfortably above this blue line here, the 50-day moving average in at 6,638. While we hold above that metric, it's likely that, that the kind of wider upward trend is going to continue. Should that be the case, we could be looking at retesting the mid-February highs, and then beyond that, we could be looking at targeting the multi-month highs. They're kind of almost a year high. Uh, that, that was set back in January. Uh, any moves to the downside could find support. In this yellow line here, the 100-day moving average, that comes to play at 6,432. And if you go below that, we keep an eye out for this area here, the lows of late November, in around 6,248. And notice how that coincides with this red line, 200-day moving average. So seeing as those, 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 those two price points overlap, that, that's, that, that's most likely to make that particular price point more significant. But obviously, there are no guarantees. Turning our attention to the DAX, the DAX has been very strong, record highs racked up. Um, we can see here very much in a, in a strong position. The gains today have, uh, have, uh, haven't been particularly huge, but nonetheless, um, they're moving higher all the same. It remains in a strong upward trend. We're currently trading around 14,430. We're moving on higher from here. We could be looking at targeting 14,500, 600, so on and so forth. And it's really up until the next big number to watch out for on the DAX will be 15,000. Any moves to the downside could find support from this blue line here, fit the moving average in a 13,915. So the entire zone between 14,000 and 13,915 is likely to act as support. Notice how on a few occasions there, thereabouts, the 50-day moving average acted as support. And the metric has, has, has been of importance in the past. It makes it more likely it will be of importance in the future. But once again, there's, there's no guarantees. Looking at what's going on over in the US, taking a look at the S&P 500. So an all-time high was set in the middle of February. We have had a fairly decent correction or, or uh, move to the downside pullback uh, in recent weeks. This is partly because of the, uh, the, the move higher in, in uh, US government bond yields has spooked traders to a certain extent. Also playing to the mix is the a fairly aggressive sell-off in tech stocks and a this and the the tech weighting on the S&P 500 is relatively large, so therefore we've had a uh, it's a, therefore we've had a decent enough decent enough pullback in the S&P 500. But despite the fact that we've seen quite a few choppy sessions recently, and uh, and despite the fact that we actually moved a bit lower yesterday in the S&P 500, we're st the net the the market is still above its 50-day moving average, this blue line here. While it continues to hold above that metric in around 3,834, I believe. Yes, 3,834, while, while it continues to hold above that metric, it's likely that the broader upward trend is going to continue. Should that be the case, we could then be looking at targeting the late January highs, and then beyond that, we could then be looking up towards the all-time high that was set in the middle of February. Sorry, if I said January, I apologize. The late, mid, the late February highs, then looking towards the all-time high that was set in mid-February, and beyond that, clearly we're looking up towards you know, 4,000. Uh, should we move lower from here if the market turns over on itself yet again? Keep an eye for the recent lows, um, the lows in around last week at 3,723. And below, um, underneath that, we're going to be looking back towards the lows of early February in around 3,664. 
take a look now what's going on over on the currency market starting off with euro dollar as we can see here after achieving a multi-year high in january we've had a pullback uh, move to the downside in euro dollar so we've had we've had the lower low the lower high the lower low granted when the market did push higher in late, in late february the highs of february did manage to take off the highs of january but uh, the, highs, the, highs of, the highs of late January, but have moved aggressively lower yet again. In fact, even today we've printed a new multi-month low, back to lows last levels last seen in November. But we can see here that it's holding above. It didn't quite get as far as this red line, the 30 moving average. If you take a look at the price action, despite the fact that it has moved lower, it has aggressively turned around. So this could be beginning. This of this trading day obviously hasn't ended yet, but if we could be in for a potential bullish engulfing. Uh, what that would what that would look like, it would look similar to this candle over here. Notice how the body of this candle here, this positive candle here, completely engulfs the red rectangle here, which is the body of the of the previous day's candle. I'm talking about the fourth and the fifth of of February. If we see something similar to that, um, depending how we finish up today, if we if we finish if we finish up near the high of the session, and the market the candle closes well above they say the yesterday's high above the body it could be a sign that we're in for a, a move to the upside and that wouldn't be a surprise given that we have been moving you know aggressively lower recently should that be the case we could look to head back up towards 120 or this yellow line here the 100 moving average in at one spot 2033 on the flip side if it did manage to turn over on itself and we take off today's low we could be looking heading back down towards one spot 18 a level last seen in late november Turn, sticking with the um, the currency theme, looking over now, what's going up? The pound versus the US dollar. <clears throat> so the pound hit its highest level uh, in going on in about two and a half, nearly three years against the um, against the against the US dollar at the uh, in late January. Since then, it's been kind of a bit of a pullback. But notice how even though it did move to the downside, it didn't even get as far back as this blue line here, the 50-day moving average. So. While we hold above that metric in at one spot 3765, it's likely that the broader upward trend is going to continue. And should that be the case, we could look at heading back up towards one spot 40, and then beyond that, if you're looking at retesting the multi-year high in at one spot 4241. Uh, any moves to the downside could find support from the 50 moving average, the blue line there. And then if you go beyond that, we could like find support from the 100 moving average in at one spot, well, just, just north of one spot 35. Looking at what's going on with the, uh, the gold market. So we talked about how, talked about currencies there. If you are going to be trading gold, it is worth your while keeping an eye what's going on with the US dollar. Um, Gold trade in US dollar, so a firmer dollar tends to tends to hurt gold, which is something what we've probably seen here recently. We've noticed how we've talked about how we've had sell-offs in euro dollar and sell-offs in pound dollar. The stronger dollar is a is a common theme there. And what do you know? We're we're seeing a move to the downside in gold. But so if we do continue to kind of push on lower from here, and if you, if you go back below 1700. And if we could be looking heading back towards the lows of late May, um, back towards 1670. And then if you have a fairly sizable break below that, it could take us back down towards this, this yellow line here, the 100 moving average, which acted as support back in November 2019. And, and the 100 moving average comes into play at 1648. But we, what we are seeing here is we've had a, quite a clear, you know, near term negative trend, but we are seeing a relatively long wick on this candle. So it, this kind of potential has the potential to be a, a, a doji. So which should that be the case, that often denotes indecision. Not to say that the market's going to continue to turn around again. It just could mean that, that there is indecision potentially um, on the horizon. And if that is the case, that could lead to a bit of a reversal. And if you do head, if you do return lower, turn higher from here, we could be looking at heading back up towards 1800. But we really need to get above this blue line here, the 50 moving average in 1827. Notice how acted a few occasions as a support. We need to kind of retake that in order to, to be more confident uh, of, the kind of, of, of the upward trend continuing. And should, should that be the case, we could then be looking heading towards 1900 and then up towards the highs of early January. And lastly, I take a look at what's going on with Brent crude oil. 
Brent crude oil, the cash contract yesterday traded at traded north at seventy dollars a barrel. It has retreated ever so slightly since. It's in a strong upward trend. I'll just zoom out here. It's in a strong upward trend. If the broader bullish trend continues, we could then be looking at targeting 75 spot 17, a level last seen in April 2019. Uh, if we do move to the downside um, on W on, on Brent crude rather rather, we could look to head back down towards the lows of early of early March in around 63 spot 11. And if we go below that, we can head back down towards this blue line here, the 50-day moving average in at well just sort just sell the $60 a barrel, 59 spot 49. So that entire zone between 60 bucks and 59 spot 49 could act as support. That's all from this video. Thank you for listening. Have a good trading week. Have a good trading day and have a good trading week.